I cracked the code to manifesting money using only two words, and I went from $8,525 in a year to over a million dollars within a couple years. And there are three simple universal laws that you can apply that will change your life. And it's based off of just two simple words you can use every day. Now, like I said, this allowed me to go from making $8,000 my first year as an entrepreneur, thinking that I was going to have to quit to give up on something that I loved, to growing that same business into seven figures within a couple of years. It was the same business. I just figured out how to crack the code to manifesting money using only two words. These two words are the basis around one primary universal law. This is probably going to be one of the most valuable videos you ever come across on YouTube, and it's probably going to be more valuable than most paid programs, seminars, and coaching that you use, because this is the exact blueprint that I went from making $8,000 to seven figures in a very quick period of time. And it's based around something called the mirror principle. And the idea behind the mirror principle is that our outer world is reflecting what is going on in our inner world. Our current circumstances are a reflection of the self-image that we form. Dr. Maxwell Maltz, he was a famous Hollywood plastic surgeon, and he discovered that clients would always want more plastic surgery, even if they looked perfect. But when these people looked in the mirror, they did not like what they saw in the reflection, even after they had the best plastic surgery operations in the world. And Dr. Maltz realized that these people were essentially trying to manipulate the mirror. They didn't like what they saw in the reflection, so all their plastic surgeries and insecurities were essentially about trying to manipulate the reflection to change the mirror's image, instead of changing the image that were presenting in front of the mirror. Dr. Maltz realized the same mirror principle taught thousands of years ago in ancient Egypt. So he started treating all these rich people who wanted plastic surgery with something else. Instead, he would work on changing their self-image. This is a very crucial point. The outer world is merely a reflection formed by the image that you built of yourself. And Dr. Maltz realized the same mirror principle that's been going on for thousands of years. So I want you to remember this very crucial point. The world is just reflecting. So we can't directly impact the reflection through manipulation, right? Instead, we have to change what we are projecting to create a different kind of image. Trying to manipulate it is like the same idea as trying to tell someone the sky is in blue, even though they can see it with their own eyes. Right, And then you resort to like hardcore sales tactics and psychological mind control to convince them the sky isn't blue, even though they see it with their own eyes. Right, It's just not going to work. And today in 2024, everybody is searching for ways to get what they want by manipulating the image in the mirror instead of going within. They're looking for the next technique, the next business secret, the next style, the next way to be attractive and sexy, the new business the new techniques to help you in dating and picking up women, the new morning routine techniques, the biohacking secrets. It's all focused on exterior manipulation. It's exactly similar to not liking what you see in the mirror, and instead of changing the image that you're projecting in the mirror, you try to change the mirror. This is crucial to understand because if you're using force to try to control and get what you want, then you're fighting against the natural laws of the universe. You decrease your chances of getting what you want, and even if you achieve it, you have to keep increasing your friction to maintain it. If you can switch the inner switch on instead, you have an unfair advantage because you no longer have any competition because everybody else is running the race backwards. And it's kind of a shame. Now, Think about it like this. There's a real story. I had a friend who started the same business as me at the same time. And we went to all the networking events together 10 years ago. We were the same age, both starting at the same time, making no money and with no success. Five years later, we'd fallen out of communication. And then he eventually reached out to me and asked if he could come over to talk. He was couch surfing and he was making just enough money to live. 
And at the same time, I was living on a one acre beach property in Maui. And it was strange because here we were, we're sitting on my patio watching the ocean and he's telling me he's failing and he can't figure out what marketing strategies he needs. And he really wants to be successful. And it was strange because we started at the same time in the same business industry, doing pretty much the same thing. But I was making seven figures and he was in the opposite reality, scratching his head. And he's like wondering what business hacks, what marketing strategy he's missing. He's asking me about Facebook advertising and if he should get a marketing agency and where he should spend his money. And I finally stopped him. I'm like, dude, do you know I've never spent a dollar on marketing? I've never spent any money on advertising. I'm doing all of this organically. Now, this is crucial to see the distinction. He was trying to change his bank account by trying to change the mirror, what he was seeing in the mirror. And it was making him broke. So now I taught him three keys so that you can understand how to shift your reality. And the last is the most simple. Two words that you can use to complete the process to master shifting your reality. The first is this mirror, the image of yourself and the image of the world. That's how it's formed. If you believe that you're not good enough, then your reality reflects that, right? My friend came for advice and he's telling me the final straw, he started wearing suits in his YouTube video, but it still wasn't helping. He hired a business coach and they told him he had to change the image of his personal brand and he needed to wear suits so he seemed more successful so he could attract more customers. Why would you do that? Because if you believe you are not good enough, or you believe you are not deserving enough, or you believe you are not smart enough, then you need to manipulate the mirror by changing what you see. Now, he was wearing a suit. So it's going to solve all his financial problems, right? But it doesn't work like that. So if you're thinking, I'm not good enough, I can't do this because I am not good enough... Then reality says, oh, here's more proof that you're not good enough that mirrors your relationship with yourself. The reflection keeps changing based on whatever you're projecting into it. So his reason for wearing a suit was that he wasn't good enough or smart enough or whatever else. So changing clothes of a high profile business millionaire, it can't shift it. It's just giving you more evidence of your relationship with yourself. And the second part of this first principle is your relationship or image of the world. So if your worldview is that you need to go to Harvard to be a millionaire, or that you need to wear a suit so people will want to be your customer, and if you don't dress a certain way, then you're going to fail, or that you expect to struggle financially because of the economy or inflation or because of stock market crash, then reality will mirror your image of the world and you will manifest confirmation intangible proof that reflects your views of the world. You see, it's like it's like dating in romance. Right? Someone believes there's no good guys or all the men are scoundrels and all the good women are taken. And they tell you this story whenever you ask how their dating life is going. And every time they repeat the same old story. They're telling the mirror to reflect it back to them with more proof that all the good guys or all the right women are gone. Then they say, see... Look, I knew it. I told you. And that's why it's so important to start to reprogram your subconscious mind. I have a free success hypnosis. If you click right here, you go to jakeshypnosis.com where it's pinned in the description. Where is the top comment right there down below? All you got to do is listen to it for a couple minutes every day. And you can start to shift the subconscious and habitual thoughts and images about yourself and the world. So your subconscious starts generating success instead of more of the same crap. So it's free. You can click right there or get it at jakeshypnosis.com. Now, the second step is to stop focusing on the law of attraction and instead focus on the law of reflection. The main issue with people's understanding of the law of attraction is that it's become so pop culture that most people think if you just think and focus on what you want then you're going to get it. But most people 
are stuck with the same self-image. So that's why they resort to all these techniques and all these types of things, but it still doesn't work and then they don't get what they want. They think the law of attraction doesn't work. But to make the law of attraction work for you, you have to focus on the reflection, which says the mirror of your reality is reflecting your self-image and your image of the world. So you need to exclusively focus on forming a new identity and a new worldview. Dr. Joe Dispenza says, your personality creates your personal reality. So if you want to change your personal reality, you have to shift your personality. Your personality is your self-image, right? Which is what you believe about yourself and the world. So let me explain how this by just kind of painting a picture of like when my friend came over, right? So at the time, I had super long hair, like hair close to my belly button. I looked like I was in a rock band or I was like in a reggae band, not an entrepreneur. And when I started my career, a lot of older and more successful people told me I needed to cut my hair if I wanted to be taken seriously and become successful. But in my friend's worldview, you only made millions of dollars if you did have this proper clean cut and suit. And according to his worldview, if you weren't successful, you needed to change your appearance. He was clean cut, right? And I look like a homeless hippie. And we're in the exact same business, yet he's struggling and I'm not. What happened? In Steve Jobs' biography, he said that Steve Jobs believed he was the exception to every rule. The exact quote was that Steve would say, I am the exception to every rule. And once I read that, I started saying it to myself every day. I built a belief that my long hair was actually a valuable branding asset because I would look different than other people, so it would actually catch their attention. Even if they thought it was weird to have such long hair, I could use it to my advantage because then I'd get their attention, and then once they heard me, they would end up wanting to learn more. So I explained this to my friend that his problem was he believed he needed to follow the rules if he wanted to be successful, but I believed you could become the exception to every rule. You can comment that down below. I am the exception to every rule. You have to change the meaning that you give things. One person can believe that because they didn't go to college or they don't have a great education or prestigious degrees, they can't be successful. So the world reflects that to them and then they call the world unfair because they don't have the same education as somebody who was able to go to Harvard or Yale. But someone else without a college degree may believe it's the key to getting rich because you get to start your business earlier. Elon Musk, the richest person in the world, he doesn't have a college degree. Mark Zuckerberg built Facebook as a freshman in college and he got a head start on all of his classmates before he dropped out. In theory, we all know many millionaires and many billionaires without formal educational credentials who are more successful than people who went to Ivy League schools. Another person might believe that they need to know the right dating techniques, the right psychological tricks to get the romantic partner to like them. So they learn all these tricks and secrets and they have this whole strategy of how to get someone to think they're attractive and, you know, you just kind of criticize them and you do this, right? For me, someone just pushed me into my wife at a birthday party. They grabbed my shoulder, they pushed us face to face and they were like, you guys are going to like each other. So some people will learn every single trick because that's their worldview and they think they need it and then they're still single. And then someone else will just get pushed into their future husband or wife out of nowhere. One believes they need to manipulate and force and strategize to change what they see in the mirror. Another person believes they are good enough so it comes to them without the need to chase or force it. So, what do you believe about yourself? If you don't accept it and then find how you're the exception to every rule, you will compensate and project your feelings of inadequacy and inferiority and then the mirror reflects it back. Right? Do you have a crooked tooth? that you think is your problem. So do I, but I think it is an asset. Do you believe that something bad happened to you in the past and now it's the reason you don't deserve what you really want? So the first step in this internal shift is to make peace with your perceived faults. And when you make changes, never make them out of fear and desperation like my friend was doing with the sudden shift into suits, right? There's nothing wrong with dressing excellent. My mentor, Bob Proctor, did. 
but if you're doing it out of fear to conform with the rules that you believe to be true, then by the law of reflection, you will still create struggle. Then next, build a new version of yourself. You do this the same way you design a home or a new invention. What's the first steps when you build a home or a new product invention? You sketch the blueprints in the design on paper, or you sketch the designs for a product to get a prototype. So I invite you to sketch the next version of yourself the same way. Build a prototype for the greatest version of yourself. When I decided that I wanted to be an author, I was 19 years old. I had no college degree. I failed junior English class in high school. So I had to envision a script of a new version of myself, a new personality where I could see myself being able to focus for long periods of time, being able to craft ideas perfectly onto paper. And in my mind, I let go of the self image where I was a college dropout with ADD problems. Now I viewed myself as a highly focused professional author who was easily able to write thousands of words a day. Once you start to revision yourself and build a prototype of the next version of yourself, you want to write it on paper so you can read it every day before visualization. So before I began writing my book, I created a few page document that detailed my new personality and my new personal reality as a millionaire author, speaker, YouTuber. Then I recorded a self-hypnosis MP3 track and I would listen to it every day after I would read my document out loud. So if you want to get that, it's free. You can click right there. It's my free success hypnosis or go to jakeshypnosis.com. It's pinned to the comments and in the description right there down below and you can get it for free. You write out the new version of yourself. You read it out loud. Then you listen to the success hypnosis to ingrain it. Now at the beginning of this video, I talked about two simple words and this is the easiest, the simplest and the hardest part. Jim Rohn used to say, what's easy to do is easy not to do. And I want to break that down for you because two words can change everything. So to explain these two words, let's go back to my friend, right? He's telling me about all of his problems. How do you think he described himself? He said, I am still broke after five or six years. I am trying to find the answers. That's why I am struggling. I am not able to make money. I am confused, etc., etc." Everything he felt was stated as an absolute fact cemented by two words, I am. Think of the words I am like fertile soil that you need to plant seeds in a garden. If you have fertile soil, you can plant anything, right? Even weeds, invasive species, they can grow there. Whatever description of yourself comes after your I am will grow into your new self-identity and then reflect itself as your personal reality. The crucial point to understand is that your I am statements have a delayed reflection in your material world. Your new I am prototypes that you design do not instantaneously manifest in your physical reality due to the denseness of physical matter. So if you don't see your I am reflecting reality immediately, it's very important that you do not resort to your old I am beliefs. Well, it's not working, so I guess I am not good enough. This guy wasted my time with this stupid video, right? Don't do that. So think about this. When your five senses haven't confirmed your new reality, your old identity tries to reinsert itself. And that's why it's very important to brainwash yourself before the world brainwashes you. If you think about it, your I am which you're doing consciously or unconsciously. You might be like, well, I'm not going to say these two stupid words. It doesn't work. You're already doing it unconsciously. Stanford told us we have 60 to 65,000 thoughts a day. 95% of them are subconscious. 70% of those are negative and redundant. So you have like 50,000 plus thoughts that are negative and redundant. That's your personality. That's your personal identity. That's your self-image. That's your view of the world. And it's controlling your whole life. So you might as well reprogram it, right? Like, so I just did a thought experiment. Is it possible that I could be a 19-year-old college dropout, write my first book, my first year I make $8,525. And then I go, all right, am I the dumbest person in the world for trying to do this? Am I going to have to quit and go get a normal job and go back to school? 
Let me first see if I can actually legitimately mind control myself. Can I brainwash myself? Can I hypnotize myself? Can I convince myself and tricking my brain that I am a millionaire? That I am a huge author? At the time, I had like 2,000 YouTube subscribers. Now we almost have a million. Nobody published that first book. I sold 10,000 copies out of the trunk of my car. Then I got a book deal with Penguin Random House, the number one English publishing company in the world for two more books. I got translated in other languages. I'm 23 years old, 24 years old, getting my books sent to me in other languages. And I'm not very smart. I'm not particularly smart. I just realized that you can change your outer world if you change what you're projecting into it. And one of the fastest ways to do it is to change your identity. So you can get my free success hypnosis. We click here, jakeshypnosis.com. It's pinned to the comments and in the description right there down below. If you enjoy this video, give me a comment down below, please. And hit the like button on this. This lets YouTube know, hey, more people want to learn about their self-identity and it'll send it out in the YouTube universe. I think the world will be a better and more beautiful place if we all learn this stuff. So you can do that and send this out into the YouTube universe and let YouTube know. And if you enjoy this, make sure to hit the subscribe and bell notification. You can click right here to watch another video. And let me know in the comments, what do you think of today's video?